Hello, everyone. Welcome to Once Upon a Time in Black History. My name is Tamara Shiloh. I will be your host. I'm an author, educator, and owner of the Multicultural Bookstore in Richmond, California. I've started a new podcast that can be heard on Anchor, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, and SoundCloud. So check us out and be sure to visit my website at onceuponatimeinblackhistory.com. Today I'm going to share a really cool story about Henry Fox Brown, who mailed himself to freedom. That's right, mailed himself to freedom. There are many stories told about extraordinary slave escapes without maps or compasses, Many depended on quilt, song, and even the North Star. However, Henry Box Brown, using a wooden crate, shipped himself as cargo from Richmond, Virginia to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where slavery had been abolished. The story of this ingenious escape would later become one of the best-known slave narratives in American history. Henry was born enslaved in Louisa County, Virginia, in 1815. At age 15, he was sent to Richmond to work in a tobacco factory. His life would take a tragic turn when his pregnant wife and three children, they were sold away from him. Devastated, he was determined to gain his freedom. He was an active member of a local church, enlisted fellow parishioner James Smith and a white contact, Samuel Smith, to help him in his escape. The contact in Philadelphia was another abolitionist and member of the Philadelphia Anti-Slavery Society. Henry was shipped by Adams Express Company on March 23, 1849, in a box. And guess what? The box measured three feet long, two feet eight inches deep, and two feet wide, and it was marked dry goods. It was lined with bays, a coarse woolen cloth. Carrying with him, he had a small amount of water and a few biscuits. There was a hole cut for air. It was nailed and tied with straps and in large letters. This side up was written on the side. Lord have mercy. During the 27 hour journey, 27 hours, he traveled by wagons, railroads, steamboats, ferries, and finally a delivery wagon that brought the box to Philadelphia that brought the box to the Philadelphia Anti-Slavery Society. However, during the travel, the box was turned upside down on several occasions and handled roughly. They did not pay attention to this side up. So, he sometimes felt his eyes swelling as if they would burst from the sockets. The veins were distended with pressure from the blood running to his head. He was finally relieved by two men who needed to sit and threw the box down to sit on it. Thank you, thank you. He said, I had risen as if it were from the dead. Whew. He arrived safely and soon began appearing at public anti-slavery events. He again showed his creativity in late 1849, when he hired artists and others to begin work on one of the first moving panoramas about slavery. In April 1850, his Mirror of Slavery opened in Boston and was exhibited throughout the summer. With the passing of the Fugitive Slave Act on August 30th, 1850, it was no longer safe for him to remain in the northern free states as he could be captured and return to Virginia. And that was not happening. He sailed to England in 1850. His show performed throughout the country for the next 25 years. 
It's a shame we had to leave the country to do good things. He married and started a family with an English woman and returned to the United States in 1875, where he continued to earn a living as a magician, speaker, and hypnotist until at least 1889. The last decade of his life was spent in Toronto, where he died on June 15, 1897. Now imagine that. 